I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, I'm delighted to introduce you to a wonderful author. She has written a very charming children's storybook. It is called 12 Little Ducks. It combines the excitement of a wood duck hatchling's first leap from their nest with engaging lessons in science, social studies, math, and literacy. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Janice, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you. And thank you for having me. My pleasure. This is a great book. You've done a wonderful job of entertaining kids while giving them great lessons, as we said, in science, social studies, math, and literacy. Tell us how you came up with the idea for all of this. Well, um, literacy has always been really important to me. Um, I had a hearing and speech disability from birth um, and had my own language until uh, I was about seven. Um, so literacy um, and writing has been very important because writing became one of my ways to um, share, you know, share stories and be able to uh, talk with others. Um, but specifically for this book, um, I, I was at a little park in Weber's Falls, Oklahoma, where I lived at the time, right on the Arkansas River. And it was some kind of community event. And all of a sudden, big, huge trees under, you know, that were standing under. And all of a sudden, these little yellow fluffs of little balls of fluff are falling down and I'm amazed. It's like, what are they? And um, so that I wasn't very educated about wood ducks, it turns out, but um, I was just fascinated by them waddling off towards the river. And I had to go home and research about wood ducks and, mm. um, and wrote about a, a factual story about ducks, but a fictional story about a little family of 12 ducks. Wonderful. Was this your first time writing a children's book? No, I've got about 60 others that I've written. Okay, um, that's a couple. That's a few. Uh, <laughs> yes, I I uh, really try to focus on phonemic and phonological awareness mm -hmm. um, and um, working with speech sounds. Right. Um, that, uh, and of course, that's important to me because if you can't hear the sounds or you're not aware of sounds, um, you're not going to be able to speak them or to be able to read very well. So... Um, you know, rhyming, um, alliterative words, um, syllables, segmentation, um, even like in the book, um, sounds of the egg cracking, uh, mm -hmm. just environmental sounds are really important to developing literacy. And so I try to incorporate all of those in all my books. And it's pretty amazing that um, teachers studying in the United States over recent years have kind of turned away from phonics. And they've been told that that's not a holistic way to learn, uh, which turns out to be a bunch of garbage And places like uh, Columbia University have now done a 180 and like, oh yeah, phonics, how we all learned how to read is the way to do it. So uh, yes. you, you knew something that uh, Columbia University didn't know apparently. Yes, we have, um, a, you know, we do have a literacy um, problem in the United States, well, worldwide, but about 54%, 54% of um, the United States citizens have literacy below the sixth grade and 20% um, don't even have functional literacy. Yeah. If you go out on the street and interview people, ask them, you know, simple questions, what's the last book you read? They'd be stumped, right. you know? Yes. So it's, it's a sad state of affairs and I understand people are learning different and that it's a digital age and everything's here and you can watch it on YouTube, but <clears throat> You do still need the basic tools of learning, of knowing how to, to read. So you're doing a great job with kids. I liked how in the book, each duckling has their own unique way of jumping from the nest. Tell us a little bit about why that was important to you and what it teaches children. Um, for me, because um, I was a child with a disability, I still do have a hearing disability. Um, that's really important because I think we all do things just if you if you talk to children, 
you know, they talk about running fast or, you know, the way they can climb. And I think if we can say, you know, we all have our own way of walking um, or running or jumping, uh, speaking, um, we're, we're all different, but we're more alike than we are different. We're all going to get to the ground, but we might do it in our own way. Um, and so I think, you know, acceptance of diversity is huge for me, uh, mm -hmm. being in the field of early childhood and the field of disabilities. Um, I think it's, it's looking at ability rather than disability. What can we do and how do we do it? Tell me a little bit about your career working with kids. Um, well, I, um, I started with, uh, well, I really didn't start. I've always taught like Sunday school lessons and did things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, starting my career, going back to and getting my master's um, right prior to that, I was a, a child care director for the Helen Walton Children's Center, if you're aware of Walmart, because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, I was from Bentonville, Arkansas. But I was the director there for a while and um about that time when I was finishing my master's, I was recruited by the Department of Health uh, in Oklahoma to begin work on with Sooner Start program, which is our early uh, childhood uh, program for infants and toddlers with disabilities and their families. Mm -hmm. And so I went and I learned so much about uh, more about disability, more, just more, mm -hmm. and um, soon became um, a community educator for early childhood teachers, um, moved on from there to become a college professor uh, in early childhood, um, and then a national consultant across the nation with tribal um, head starts and early childhood programs, and now I work for the University of Oklahoma with high school uh, students with disabilities. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you're a great example of someone who had challenges early on and certainly has, you know, um, done very, very well. I would have no idea you had any kind of communication issue with hearing or, you know, and that can affect your speech as well. And your speech is perfect. So uh, great job, whatever you had to do to get to the point where you're at. Lots of work. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. Is it cochlear implants? Is that what you No, use? just no? a hearing loss. Um, right. And I it really, um, really wasn't, you know, that was way back in the early 60s. So, right. you know, education was different, you know, she'll outgrow it. Um, yeah, exactly. So I, it really wasn't discovered until later. And um, I have, have had lots of speech therapy. Right. Um, and just working on, sometimes I have words that come out that don't sound right and I may not hear it, but well, so do I. <laughs> That's my way of talking. <laughs> exactly. Like, so do I, the words don't come out right, particularly after happy hour, the words don't come out. Right. So <laughs> yes. What can you do? What can you do? Let's talk about your book for a second again. Now, after the ducklings reach the ground, there's a surprising twist without giving away too much. Can you tell us how this twist supports the uh, educational themes of the book? Um. I don't know if I can do that. Let me see. Okay, um, that's fine. We can save it for the read. Just the <laughs> folks at home. We don't we don't want to have a spoiler alert here. So yes. there is a little surprising twist. There, that was a challenge. <laughs> it is a challenge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And obviously you think um, aside from learning about the uh, importance of diversity and the fact that everyone's different, everyone has its challenges, basic educational themes like science and social studies and so on are very important for kids as well, right? Oh yeah. It all, it all is integrated. And I think we, we sometimes separate um, different topics of learning and really they're integrated. And um, so with my book, with my books, um, I provide a section in the back that uh, teachers or parents, the, the adult reader can build on that um, book for creativity, for social studies, science, math. Um, it, so you can really build a whole curriculum around just one book. Um, you probably won't do that, but it gives all kinds of ideas to extend learning across the curriculum. And I believe that is important. We don't learn in isolation. Um, and I don't think we ought to teach in isolation. So absolutely. Who is your target audience for this book? Regular parents, regular kids, schools, all of the above? All of the above. Um, 
you know, kids, I want kids to be able to have fun with my books, enjoy the, the silliness and rhyming and, and uh, silly words. Um, but um, I, I think, you know, it's really up to adults to introduce books, enjoy books with children. Mm. Um, you know, parents should be reading nightly to their children. That's one of the best literacy strategies that we can do. But like you said earlier, you know, we give children those devices, we're mm. on those devices. Um, and so I, I like to just give hints, tips about, you know, if you're reading the book, enjoy it, first of all. And then you can start saying, oh, listen, flip and skip sound alike, don't they? You know, or um, fluff and, and fish have the beginning sound. What, what, yes, what sound do you hear? You know, that's the sound. So I think it's, we have to be able to point those things out. Um, children like to read uh, familiar books over and over. So when you pick out it, when a child gets a familiar book, letting them read it over, but also integrating those phonological things that's happening. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's great. It provokes good conversations between parent and child. Mm -hmm. And if you teach your child to read, you're basically equipping them with all of the tools they need to learn all the other subjects as well. That's the first hurdle. Learn to read. Once you learn to read, you can read about how to do math. You can read about social studies. You can read about science. But reading is fundamental, as they used to say, right? Absolutely. It's um, it's everything. You know, I say, you know, the teachers are the ones that teach the doctors and the lawyers and the, you know, they teach us all. And uh, technology is is uh, while it's good for many things, um, it does prevent that deep reading. Um, you know, kids are learning to scan. Uh, they're learning to write in shorthand. It's affecting attention spans. So um, just getting back to uh, books and understanding how books work, you know, how to comprehend. Comprehension is huge. And reading um, and vocabulary is all about critical thinking. And Absolutely. if we're not developing critical thinking, we're not doing our job. Absolutely. Our jobs as educator, our jobs as parents, absolutely yes. for sure. Janice Joby has written a remarkable book. It is called 12 Little Ducks. It's a charming children's book that combines the excitement of a wood duck hatchling's first leap from their nests with engaging lessons in science, social studies, math, and literacy. It's a great book. It's great for teachers. It's great for parents. It's great for kids. It's holiday seasons coming up. Also, New Year's, you know, let's start out with replacing this at night with a book. That's a great idea, huh? Janice, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you again. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.